So Kai, I would like to ask you, can you, I mean, somehow open the, the topic for us and explain to us why universal health coverage actually is such an important topic um, for sustainable social development? Yeah, thanks, Klaus. Um, let me first thank you for inviting me to speak um, on this occasion. It's not something um, that you get every day a chance to, to speak to um, a group of people who are interested in leadership challenges and are probably on their way to being to being leaders themselves. Some of you may even be already leaders in your own field. So um, I very much appreciate uh, the time that you make to listen to us. Um, let me quickly explain why I'm here. Um, I'm working at the GIZ um, on the topic universal health coverage. Um, as the GIZ, we are part of the network of um, different development partners that uh, have come together to move the agenda internationally. Um, here in the background, you see the name of it, um, Providing for Health Social Health Protection Network. Um, I'll put the um, uh, web address in the chat now so that you can also have a look and search our website, get a bit of information, and there it is. And yeah, um, for the last seven years I have been working on this subject, and mostly in Eastern Africa, where also this lovely lady is um, from. In her hand she is holding um, the card of her community-based health insurance scheme. Um, this is something that is quite um, typical when, like a typical scheme when we talk about universal health protect, uh, coverage. But the first thing that I would like to do is actually unpack the meaning of universal health coverage for you a little bit. Because um, I find it quite important to point out that when we talk about universal health coverage, um, that we are not only talking about health services, but that it's a, actually a wider um, thing. Um, but nevertheless, when we talk about universal health coverage, then of course we're talking about health. We're talking about people. So um, imagine that in East Africa, where I've been working um, most, um, you have different situations that can occur. Um, it is quite a common situation that a woman, let's call her Glory for the time being, um, is pregnant, that she's about to give birth, and that complications arise. Um, she's at the health facility, and um, when the complications get serious, she needs a C-section, like a cesarean section, to give birth safely um, to her child. Um, cesarean sections are quite expensive. Not everyone can afford it, and if Glory hasn't got the money, then she's in grave danger of either dying herself or losing her child. What is she going to do if she doesn't have the money? Or consider um, Mohammed, who is um, a motor taxi driver and gets into an accident with a car. He um, needs um, expensive surgery or um, risks um, having his leg amputated, which then in the following would mean that he would lose his job, he can't ride a motorbike anymore, and then loses um, his means of supporting himself financially and his family. And if we look at it at the global level, then this is what happens to a lot of people. Um, around 100 million people every year worldwide are pushed into poverty because of the um, expended expenses they have on, on health care. And there's around 1.3 billion people in the world who lack access to quality health care. So this is a huge topic. And these two figures mean that, um, the, that the costs of health services and the costs of falling sick are actually among the most important obstacles to a world without poverty. This is why we're talking about um, health as a um, challenge to sustainable social development. And of, and of course, also economic development. Um, 
And if we talk about universal health coverage, then we talk about changing this, that so many people lack access to health care and that they um, have to pay a lot when uh, needed when accessing that care. Um, and this is really important for me. It means that people will be healthier, but universal health coverage also means that their livelihoods are better protected. So in, in a way, we are talking really about two things. We are talking about the, the health aspect of the topic, and we are talking about the social protection aspect, that people um, do not have to spend a lot, and that they continue um, being able to support their themselves and their families in times of uh, sickness. This is why it is such an important topic. Yeah, thank you, Kai. Um, I think this is has been quite a, a, a good introduction, and I think also um, I like the way that you that you were linking it uh, with people. It's not about um, somehow uh, uh, um, something uh, 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 not concrete, but I mean it's it's about it's about people, and this was also I would like to share with you. Uh, what uh, when when we were uh, having a workshop together, what made uh, Martin Kalungu Banda, who unfortunately cannot be with us today here in the webinar, but he really tried and he is working with us on the topic, why he is an important, I think, consultant to lots of governments in, in, in Africa and as a leadership development facilitator, facilitator, when he said, this is a crucial topic for me, uh, also as a Zambian, as an African, uh, it is such uh, closely linked uh, to a vicious circle um, that it forms uh, with poverty. So, but Kai, I mean, coming back um, to the system where this all happens, I mean, um, can you tell us a little bit more uh, how this, I mean, relates uh, uh, to each other? I mean, if Glory doesn't have the means uh, to give birth uh, to a, her child in a safe environment, if Mohammed, uh, 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 in the worst case, loses his, his leg and his income. This all is part of the system that these people are in. And we are interested in systems because we think, um, okay, well, of course we work with the people, but we try uh, to have a closer look at systems in terms um, in order to uh, yeah to change them and to to better the situation for the people, so can you please give us some more information on that kind? Yeah, thanks. Um, I'll try my very best. I think the when we talk about universal health coverage, it's, it's very clear also from what you, Klaus, have said that um, providing health care to millions more to millions of people more, means also doing a lot more, really. Um, on the one hand, it means provide, um, having more doctors and nurses. It means having more hospitals and health posts in rural areas. It means having more drugs um, to give to people so that um, they get healthy. The common thing to all of these issues um, is often that it costs a lot of money. And um, this is the, the side where, where I'm coming from. I'm myself not a doctor, I'm myself an economist, and, and, this, and the financial side of universal health coverage is a very important one. Um, if I say it costs a lot of money to provide universal health coverage to um, people, um, then that means that we are not working only with ministries of health. Ministries of health, if given the money, can do something on the doctors, they can do something on the health facilities, and they can do something on the drugs. But they need to get it, which typically means that the issue at hand is also bringing the, the whole government in, the cabinet, 
and especially the Ministry of Finance to um, to get them on board and signing up on a um, on a program of expanding coverage is is a huge thing and requires a lot of coordination. If we talk about social health protection, this is also something that has to be seen in the context of other social protection initiatives. Um, just to mention a few pensions, um, cash transfers, potentially um, social or uh, public works programs. Um, they all together form um, a network of, or a safety network for people when they fall sick. Um, and to, to integrate these systems in a good way and requires a lot of coordination. And then of course, if, um, if we have a health system, then we are not talking about a monolithic um, government system in many countries. We typically talk about having private providers. Um, we talk about having private insurers. We have patient interest groups pushing for better coverage um, for specific issues. Um, on the other hand, we also have trade unions and employers associations which might worry about um, additional costs that they may face uh, when health insurance is being introduced, for example. So there are a lot of issues where um, just knowing how to um, arrange health financing in a, in a good way, um, where knowing how to run an insurance company um, are not enough. Um, these questions are typically quite technical questions. Um, I myself, as a health economist, I have been trained in these issues and um, I can give direct support on these issues to get these technical issues right. But this is not all that is needed. Um, we also need um, we, we also need the more political side. We need to get people to talk to each other. Reforms are in hardly any country are something where someone says this is how the world should be and then the world will be like that. Much more typically and in all the health systems where I have worked, it is um, rather a negotiation between different um, parties. And in many places, um, probably even including my own home country, Germany, systems of government are not always best suited for um, providing the space for this coordination and for this for these negotiations. Um, they can be quite hierarchical, they can be quite um, inflexible, and this at the end means that the people working in these systems do not have necessarily the best environment to, to get things done. They have some space, but um, what really the issue becomes is for the, each individual is to maximize the space, to put themselves into a position where they um, bring the issues forward by providing leadership, by taking other people with them on their way. And this is something that we have seen in a lot of countries um, as lacking. There is some technical advice, but the political dimension and the leadership dimension of universal health coverage is where we often get stuck. Yeah, thank you, Kai. Um, and this probably was the moment when, when we also came in uh, with the GIZ leadership uh, development practice because as you describe it um, in the system it's it's much more than just technical questions and also from the chat we can already see it's great uh, that, that you are posting all your questions and you will have uh, the opportunity soon to ask questions and the ones that cannot be asked we try to harvest them later so my colleague Susanna is actually working on that the chat shows it shows it already it's not just about technical things uh, it's in fact uh, a highly adaptive challenge 
in a way that there is no master plan. There is maybe more or less um, successful systems that we uh, uh, can analyze and maybe uh, use uh, as a blueprint. But on the other hand, I mean, uh, you know how difficult it is uh, to transfer a system from one part of the world to another. And then again, you can also ask, is this system uh, really what people need? Like uh, when I, I try to have always a little bit one eye on the chat and I say that one of you was saying the Western system, the Northern system, like in Germany, um, which is fairly high developed, but it is mainly uh, 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 working uh, or trying to cure the symptoms, but not too much going to the cause. Of course, this is a statement that, that you can that you can make, and that it shows uh, uh, it is it is difficult. It's not about um, copying systems and uh, trying to make them work in, in, in other countries, even if it was possible. So it's an adaptive challenge, and it has to do a lot uh, with leadership because that's the moment we think uh, when leaders come into place. Not necessarily talking about high-level political leaders, but People in the system who, let's say, take over a leading position, who want to make a difference on their level. Um, so I think um, this probably is a good moment uh, to open our webinar more into uh, a dialogue um, between, uh, or let's say, within our MOOC uh, community. And uh, I can later tell you a little bit uh, about some ideas that we have developed already with GIZ, but mm, I'm much more interested to learn from you, um, from, uh, from the whole MOOC community, and in this case, from the 24 people that we are in that working room, uh, what you think about the topic and what you would like to know, what you would like to ask, uh, maybe Kai or me or just uh, dialogue on with your with your fellow peers. So at this kind at this moment, I would like to pass the microphone to Karen, uh, who's gonna um, open um, the uh, discussion or rather dialogue within the group. Karen, are you ready to step in? Yes, thank you, Klaus. As we are all on this leadership journey together, I would frame the question um, for like a sense making. So not only to discuss specific issues in general, but to I would like to invite you to for a moment listen in yourself. So what of what has been said now stood really out for yourself personally? So what touched you personally and what of part of the story or points resonate with the leadership challenges you see for yourself. And I would like to invite you to raise your hand and then I can give you the mic and you can share your thoughts. So what stood out for you and what touched you personally? Maybe connected with your leadership challenges. You can also share your thoughts in the chat. But if you like, I would really invite you to raise your hand and share your story with us. Take your time. Well, while others are still gathering their thoughts, and maybe let me just um, explain how I actually ended up working on this topic um, and why I am myself am so touched by it. Um, in 2005, briefly after the tsunami that hit Indonesia, um, I was in Aceh, um, and we, um, I was there with the GIZ, as in a, a program that was aimed at improving the financial systems and we worked on 
health insurance. We um, went out to ask people what kind of insurance they needed. And um, we went to a couple of small villages on the coast um, that, had been, that had been devastated. And basically what everyone said, what they needed most um, was health insurance. People were so concerned about not being able to protect themselves and the loved ones um, from sickness um, and from the effects of sickness on their household income that this was a major worry for them. So this is why I moved into this line of business because I felt that it was um, really something where I would like to dedicate my time to um, to change this situation. I know it's a challenging question. <laughs> so does anyone want to share? Um, my suggestion would be maybe to take on the one or other question we get in the chat. But the invitation to share your observations is still open. So whenever you feel ready, and it may well take a little bit more time, uh, so please raise your hand. Or also raise your hand if you have a question. Um, yes, Klaus is asking if everybody knows how to raise the hand. Maybe I will explain that again. Um, as we did it very early in the process only, and many others joined. So you see right above your names, different icons. They can also see the smiley face. And there is a hand, the left icon, and if you press it, you have raised your hand. It's as simple as that. So please feel free uh, to raise your hand if you would like to get the mic to share your talk, thoughts or to ask a question. In the meantime, um, do we have some questions in the chat? I just see lots of things going on there. Yeah, I'm, I'm happy to ask to answer, like to try and address a couple of questions. Um, it would be maybe easiest if you would pick the ones that you feel um, should be uh, should be addressed in the, um, in the forum, and then, well, Klaus and I will do our very best to to give thoughts on it on them. Okay, wonderful. So we have one question from Mohammed. Um, he asks for examples of cooperation and successful examples that benefited from a wide range of people that needed the health coverage and how did this happen? Um, in the last couple of years, um, there have been um, several big achievements, I would say. Um, we have had and achievements in systems um, that came from from above that were kind of mandated um, down, and we have seen China make it uh, covering around 800 million people with uh, health insurance, with basic health insurance, over a very short period of time when they um, rolled out the the new corporate rural medical scheme. And um, in, in a much smaller environment, and in a much poorer country, we have seen how Rwanda managed to, um, to cover uh, around 90% of the people with health insurance. This, um, this is, shows that even with um, very limited resources, a lot of progress can be made. Um, we have also seen um, how in over the last couple of years, other places like like Turkey made big steps towards um, universal health coverage, and we have seen how Ghana, for example, introduced 
um, health, social health insurance, national health insurance for 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 a la much larger percentage of the population than than they were able to before. Indonesia is a great example where coverage has been rolled out. Um, I mention these examples not as examples where everyone has perfect coverage now. And um, this is something that is usually not ha happening. Uh, all countries have um, um, several issues um, that they still need to address. And um, the, the amount of services being provided to the population differs um, depending on how much money is available. Um, but we have several examples, such as Thailand, um, which is also one of the big success stories, that really show that a lot can be done, and that a lot can be done if all the different uh, partners in the country pull um, in the same direction um, to move the system. And the coordination between the different um, partners is, is a major issue. This is also something that um, we as the P4H network space uh, place special emphasis on. We're trying to um, help governments to coordinate themselves and to create inclusive processes um, to take on the various interests um, in the process. And as Klaus mentioned, we are currently developing a leadership training for uh, for people working on expanding coverage to more people and um, to make this happen. I think Hiel was asking earlier um, if there were um, if there were chances to use leadership techniques to make this happen. Um, yes, we are we are um, trying to get this going and. And being here with you is, today is actually part of this. 